Hello, and welcome to the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Moore, and I am the PC America Sales Engineer that will be conducting today's training. My role is to help the reseller and bar community better understand the features and functionality of the PC America Point of Sale software. Today we're going to be discussing the liquor store. Let's get started. When you first click on the software, this brings you into your login screen. On your login screen, you have Manager, Help, and Exit. Manager allows you to make any kind of changes or back office adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of the software, you can refer to our help menu. Exit allows you to exit out of the software. Below these three options, we have ways of sending any kind of pictures, logos, or any brands to your liking. That is done in your display setup. Let's navigate there now by clicking on Manager. And when we click on Manager, we're prompted for a password. By default, the password is admin, and the ID is 01. Let's type that in now. Now let's click on number four, setup, letter E, display setup. So as you can see, this is the picture that I have set in the background. I also have the ability to set the color of my background along with my font, which I have set in yellow for my font and my red for the background. Let's hit update. Again, this is display setup. Below where you can set any kind of brand, logo, or any picture to your liking, you also have the ability to clock into the software. This allows you to clock in with either a unique identifier that you have assigned to the employee or an access card. If you are interested in purchasing an access card, you can always contact your account manager. To the left here, we have a number pad. This is the number pad that we use to log into the software. By default, the ID is 01 and the password is admin. So let's do that now. 01, enter, and the password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. This now brings us directly into our invoice screen. Let's give you a little breakdown on how the screen works. At the top, we have scan barcode now and quantity. When you scan the barcode, <coughs> it will then populate the screen. Quantity will show you how many items you have scanned. Below the invoice list, we also have delete, discount, quantity change, and price change. These buttons here are used to manipulate the order that is currently being rung up. Let's scan an item now and show you how the item will populate the screen. As you can see, it's now prompt me to scan my license. So I'll scan my license, and as long as I'm old enough, it'll okay the sale. You have three seconds, and then it'll okay the sale. Now, <clears throat> let's bring up a couple more items to show you how these item options work. Now, if you need to delete a button, all you need to do is make sure that you highlight the line first, and then you can hit delete. Same thing with discount, quantity change, and price change. These buttons are specific to the line that you have selected. So delete, gets rid of line three. Discount, let's say I want to discount line number three. And I want to make this 50%. Keep in mind, you do have the ability to create coupons in the software for the dollar amount or percentage, so you are not locked down to the discount button. So let's say I want to discount this 50%. As you can see, the 50% has been applied to line number three, making the price 27.50. Let's delete that just by highlighting it and hitting delete. Now line number three is gone. Quantity change. As you can see, we have the same item rung up a couple times. Now what I can do is delete all these items and then change the quantity to three and we'll still have the same total. So delete, delete, delete. Scan the item. So make me scan my license again. There we go. Three seconds, okay the sale. And now I can change the quantity to three, making the price 177.79. Price change. This allows you to change the price times the quantity. So let's say we want to do a price change of $50. We change this to $50 just to make the price 150. There you go, making the price 150 with tax is 11.63, grand total 161.63. Below these item options, we also have F1 through F12. Now these buttons at the bottom of the screen are for end users or customers that are more comfortable using a keyboard and mouse. The system is fully touchscreen, so it's made for speed so you can get the customer in and out as fast as possible. But if you're comfortable using a keyboard and mouse, they can use these options F1 through F12. These options also work with the menus at the top of the screen. F2 through F5, F6 through F9, F1 through F12. 
If you love these buttons at the bottom of the screen, we also have Quick Find and Find. And Quick Find allows you to pull up any customers that you're tracking in the software, either by swiping the card that you have associated with that customer, or by entering their telephone number that you have associated with that customer. Find allows you to pull up any customers that you're tracking in the system. You'll have the ability to pull, look them up by their number, last name, company, and phone number. You also have the ability to add a customer on the fly if need be. Now what's really neat about this is that now you have the ability to scan the customer's license and auto-populate the fields for the customer. So add customer, hit scan license, scan the back of the license, and as you can see, it's now filled in my first name, last name, my street address, my city, my birth date, the state, and zip code. So now you have the ability to scan the back of a license and enter a customer into the software on the fly if need be. Above Find and Quick Find, we have Cash, Check, Credit and Debit, and Account. These are just basic shortcuts to your Mount Tender screen. Let's hit Pay and I'll show you what I mean by that. These are our common, ten uh, uh, common tender options that we have here. At the bottom of the screen, we have our common dollar amounts. The last dollar amount always rounds up to the nearest dollar. You have the ability to close out the transaction on the invoice screen. Again, the system is made for speed so you can get the customer out in and out as fast as possible. So instead of hitting pay and then swiping the card, you could just swipe the card in this field and that will finalize the transaction. Above these tender options, we also have void invoice, hold, TS lookup, and options. Void invoice is a feature that cannot be reversed, so keep in mind when voiding something out of the system, it must be your final decision. Also, these are tracked and recorded in your invoice tolls report, option number three, which I will show you a little later on. Hold. This gives you the ability to put an invoice on hold for any reason. Let's scan a couple products and show you what I mean by that. So let's say we get to this one particular customer. All right, rang up all of his items, but he forgot his wallet in the car. So what you need to do is take the transaction and put it on hold so you can now continue with your line of customers. But you also don't want to have to re-ring this whole order all over again. So what you can do is hit your hold button, and this will keep the, the uh, invoice on hold as long as you want. Let's give it a name with Mike. Hit OK. And now the invoice is on hold. Now I can continue with my line of customers, and now finalize all their transactions. Now let's say Mike comes back up to the register, and now he wants to pay out his total because now he has his wallet. All you need to do now is hit fetch on hold, double click on the invoice, and that loads the invoice all over. Now you can finalize the payment as you would. So again, this gives you the ability to put an invoice on hold for any reason. TS lookup, also known as your touch screen lookup. These are where all your items and departments are located. You have your departments on the left, items on the right. You also have a cursor which follows you around so you know which department you're currently in. You also have the ability to color code your departments and items. That is done in your touchscreen configuration. Touchscreen configuration also allows you to reorganize these departments and buttons in any order that you would like. Also allows you to set pictures and hide any of these departments and items that you do not want to display on screen. Again, that is your touchscreen configuration which I will show you a little later on. Options is the same as your manager screen. This allows you to make any kind of changes or back office adjustments that need to be made in the software. Age verification is very important in the liquor store environment. So the next thing I want to show you is how do we add an item into the system and enable it with age verification. Let's navigate to our options screen now. First, we must enable our age verification settings. So let's click on setup number four, setup screen letter G. First, we want to click on Hardware to make sure that our scanner is set up properly. Hardware, then navigate to page number 2. We then want to make sure that the ID scanner is set to Honeywell Metrologic HP Imager. Next, we want to navigate to the Inventory tab. Here, we're going to set up our two levels of age. So we want to put a check mark in Check ID for Birthday Prompt. And below, we have Level 1, Level 2 for our ages. Maybe you sell tobacco, one for 18 and the other for alcohol 21. You also have the ability to change the prompt when you scan the license on screen. Let's hit update now. Now that we've enabled our age verification settings, let's navigate to number five administrative, letter B, department maintenance. Department maintenance is gonna be the screen where you add all of your different departments for your products. At the top of the screen here, we have category for this department. 
category for this department is meant for more detailed reporting. This can be used with your product mix report. Department ID, this allows you up to eight characters, so keep in mind you are limited to characters when setting up your department ID. Department description allows you up to 30 characters. Make sure that you have this in here the way you want it to appear because this is what's going to show in your TS lookup. Let's hit add at the bottom of the screen, add department. The department we're going to add is going to be called whiskey. For the department description, I'm going to duplicate the ID for the description. I'm now going to hit save at the bottom of the screen. Your department has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. Now you have previous and next. These are the ways that you can navigate through your departments. Lookup is the most fastest and efficient way of navigating through all your departments in the system. I'm just going to hit save one more time to make sure our changes commit. So now that we've added our new department, let's exit out of here so we can create our new item and put it into this department. So exit on the lower right, and we're going to go next door to letter A, Inventory Maintenance. Now this will be the screen where you add all of your products for your departments. Keep in mind the screen does look very busy, but we also have alternate methods of importing your inventory into the system. We use a feature called ASCII Import. You can find more information about the ASCII import by navigating to our FAQ.PCAmerica.com website. Let's give you a little breakdown of how the screen works. Top section is the general information that is required for a product. Middle section is optional information that can be enabled on the product. Bottom section is how we navigate through our items in inventory and how we add our items into inventory. Let's hit add at the bottom of the screen. When you hit add, you have five types of items that you can create. Standard item is your regular standard inventory. Coupon, so you can create a coupon for the dial amount or percentage, so you're not locked down to the discount button on the invoice screen. Kit allows you to bundle products together. Choice item allows you to categorize. Good example would be, let's say you have a button called wine, and then once you hit wine, all of your different types of wine would then populate. Modifier group is used as a product prompt. Let's select standard item. Now, let's scan the barcode of our product. Make sure you click on the item number field first so you have a blinking cursor, as you see here. And now scan the barcode. Now let's enter the description of our product. This is called Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now let's set our cost. Let's say we pay $150 for the bottle. The price we charge is going to be $190. If you already have your tax set in the software, this will automatically be calculated. And let's say that we have about 10 bottles in stock. Let's hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. Now what we want to do is enable our different levels of age on the product. So if this was a tobacco product, I can enable check ID before selling. This is level 1. Check ID number 2 before selling is level 2. I'm going to enable check ID number two before selling. Now I'm going to hit save one more time. Let's exit out of here and show you how this item will bring up. So exit, exit out of your option or manager screen, and now let's scan the barcode of our product. When I scan this barcode, it should then prompt me to scan my ID. There you go. Now I'll scan the back of my license. Gives you about three seconds to okay the sale and confirms that I'm old enough. And that's how age verification works. Next, let's navigate back to inventory maintenance and continue breaking down that screen. So options, number five, administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. Now let's navigate back to the item that we originally created. So we're gonna hit our drop down arrow, select our whiskey department, and there's our Johnny Walker Blue Label. So now let's click on ordering info. Ordering info allows you to associate a vendor with the item so you can order that product through the system. The second method of adjusting your number in stock is doing an instant PO. These are for items that are not associated with vendors in the system. Now when I hit instant PO, this will come up so I can adjust the number of stock to whatever I want. Let's say I want to make that minus five. 
I now have 5 in stock. Let's say I want to do plus 5, and that will bring me back up to 10. Ordering info allows me to associate multiple vendors with one item. Now the reason why you could associate more than one vendor with the item is because let's say one vendor is out of stock of your product or one vendor has a better price. Either way, you still want to be able to get your item. So this is why you have the ability to set more than one vendor per item. Now in order to set these vendors, we must exit out of inventory maintenance and create a vendor to associate with this item. So let's hit save here. And now we're going to exit out. Click on number five administrative and letter G, vendor maintenance. Now when adding a vendor into the system, the only required fields is vendor number and company name. Now all required fields is optional, but we highly recommend that you do enter this information. So now let's add a new vendor in here. So we're just gonna hit add at the bottom of the screen. And let's give this any number. And we're gonna call this Adams Whiskey. And for my purchase order delivery method, I'm going to have this set to print. So whenever I create a purchase order, it's going to prompt me where I'd like to print a copy of this purchase order. So this way I can fax it over to my vendor. So now I'll hit save. Your vendor has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. Let's hit save changes at the bottom of the screen. And now we're going to exit out. Navigate back to inventory maintenance by clicking number five, administrative. And letter A, inventory maintenance. Now let's go back into lookup and pull up our item. We're just going to hit our drop down here, select our department whiskey, and then double click on our product. As you can see, it pulls up our item. Now let's associate that vendor with the product. So now we're going to click on ordering info and add pricing from a vendor. There is Adam's whiskey at the top. I'm going to select that. And the part number is usually supplied to you from the vendors themselves, but I'm just walking you through how this works. So I'm just going to put any number in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit enter. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have cost per, case cost, and number in case. If you set the number in case and the case cost, then you have the ability to order by the case. But right now, we're only set up to order by the bottle. So let's hit save changes. Now let's exit out of here and create a purchase order to order more of these products. So we're going to exit, number five administrative, letter H, purchase orders. Now on the top right, we're going to click on add. When you hit add, you have two types of purchase orders that you can create, either a return to vendor or a standard purchase order. Return to vendor would be something that you received maybe by mistake or a damaged product. And a standard purchase order is what we usually create when creating a purchase order. So at this point, now what I want to do is I want to select my vendor that I just added into the system, which is Adam's Whiskey, which is right here, 951, and then hit Add Items. Since this is the only item that I have associated with Adam's Whiskey, this is the only item that's going to show. So Add Items, and as you can see, Johnny Walker Blue Label is the only item showing under that vendor. Now to order more of this product, I can double click on it or I can scan the product. When I double click on it, it'll add it to the bottom of the screen here. Double click. And now I have the ability to order however many I want. So I can click on the quantity order field, and let's say I want to order another 10, so I can bring my stock up to 20. I'll hit OK to that. All right, it tells you right away that my cost is 150, and because I'm getting 10, the, cost is, the extended cost is going to be 1500. So now let's hit save. As soon as I hit save, it's going to prompt me would I like, would I like to print a copy of my purchase order? So I'll hit save, and there you go. Would you like to print a copy of this purchase order? And at this point, you can print it out and then fax it over to your vendor. I'm just going to hit no because I don't want to waste the paper, but I just want to show you how it works. But as you can see, it's now created the purchase order with a status of O, meaning that the purchase order is still open. Now let's say a day has gone by and the vendor has now come on location with our product. Now just to confirm that our item is still at 10 in stock, let's go to lookup. And we're going to hit our drop down arrow. Select whiskey. Johnny Walker Blue Label, double click. And as you can see, our number in stock is still at 10. So let's go receive more of this product and adjust this to 20. So now I'm going to exit. I'm going to go back into my purchase order screen and receive those products into my system now. So number five, administrative, letter H, purchase orders. Now here's the uh, purchase order with the status of O, meaning that it's still open. So we're just going to double click on that. 
Now at the bottom of the screen, you can hit receive item. This will make you enter the line number that you're receiving. Or you can hit receive all. Receive all. You'll know if you received it by the quantity received right here. It says that you received 10. And now you can hit update. Your changes have been saved. At this point, since we already received our product, we can now close this purchase order. So double click and now hit close. Closed purchase orders may not be reopened. Are you sure you would like to close this purchase order? Yes, we are. So now let's exit out of here, navigate to inventory and maintenance, and look at our blue label. It should now be adjusted to 20 in stock. And there you go. The number of stock has now been adjusted to 20. Now let's say you want to order by the case. Right? You also have the ability just by going back into the order info tab and just setting the case cost and the number in case. And that'll give you the ability to order by the case rather than by the quantity. And that is how purchase orders work. Next tab that we're going into is going to be special pricing. Special pricing allows you to do sales pricing either by the dollar amount or percentage, bulk pricing for two for one or buy one get one, or time-based pricing if you're offering any kind of promotions. Now this is a very basic sales pricing and bulk pricing that you can set up here. We also have a mix and match. So let's exit out of here. We're just going to hit save at the bottom of the screen. Exit out. And click on letter O, mix and match. Again, this is still under number 5 administrative. Now in mix and match, this allows you to do bulk price, discount amount, and discount percentage. When you hit this drop down arrow, this will show you all the different price groups you have added into the software. In here, I currently have a bulk price set up. So in here, I have four Zinfandel wines for $20. As you can see, the prices are $9.99, $6.99, $5.99. So any combination of these wines that I get, as long as I reach four in quantity, I will get it for $20. So what I want to do now is I want to hit save, exit out of here, and show you how these bottles of wine are going to come up. But first, we must make sure that we enable the mix and match. So let's click on number four, setup, setup screen, letter G, and invoice settings. Use mix and match. You want to make sure that there's a check mark in this box here. Hit update. Let's exit out of here. And now let's hit our TS lookup button, also known as our touch screen lookup. So now let's click on our wines. So any combination of these wines that I get, I'm just going to delete this item here by hitting delete at the screen the bottom of the screen here. So any combination of these ones that I get, I'm going to get it for $20 as long as my quantity is four. So one, oh, and I can scan my license or I can skip it. I'm just going to scan my license. All right, hit OK. And so now if I ring any other ones here, so two, three, four. All right, change the price to $5 each. Now I can do this for any combination of these wine. So if I delete all four of these, all right, and just ring up four of the same wine, all right, scan the license, hit OK. All right, and if I want to ring uh, three more bottles of the same one, two, three, four. Okay, just as the price. And this is your mix and match. So you can use this for, you know, a discount amount and also for a discount percentage. Let's hit done here. And let's navigate back to our mix and match. So number five, administrative, letter O, mix and match, pricing. So in here, like I said, you still have the ability to do discount amount. And you can set the quantity. So let's say they reach uh, foreign quantity, you can have maybe $20 taken off the, the total. Okay, that's another type of uh, price group that you can set up. And same thing for the percentage. Let's exit out of here. Now let's go back into administrator number five, letter A, inventory maintenance. And the next tab we're going to move on to is your sales history. Sales history will show you any history on the item as long as it's been sold. Recipe tab. Do not confuse this with the restaurant side, but you could also use this feature to link your inventory together. So let's say you're trying to sell packs of beer, okay? And you want to be able to deduct a six pack from your 36 pack. You would use the recipe in order to set that up in the software. So now let's click on lookup to show you how that works. So lookup. I'm going to hit my drop down here, and then I'm going to select my beer department. Now in here, I have a six pack created and I also have a 36 pack created. Now every time I sell a six pack, it's deducted from my, from my 36 pack. Now let's click on the Heineken 36 pack here. 
because this is pretty much the parent item. Now in here it's telling me that I have 10 cases of my 36 packs. So that means I have 360 beers in stock. Now let's go back into lookup and back into our beer department. And now let's select our six pack. So currently the number in stock for our six pack, we have this set to zero because we have this linked to our 36 pack. Now when I click on recipe here, this is how it works. So what I'm going to do here is I'll hit, the, I'll hit remove to walk you through this whole process so you get a better understanding. So add ingredient, we're now going to select our beer, and we're going to select our beer department here, and now select the 36 pack. Now the quantity is going to be 6 divided by 36 because we're taking 6 pack out of a 36 pack. And that calculation equals to 1.6666666. The yield percentage is anything that goes to waste. When selling beer, nothing is really going to waste, so we're going to hit OK to that. The last setting that I want to confirm here is to make sure that count this item is unchecked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on optional info, first column here, count this item, and just make sure it's unchecked because this item is linked to the 36 parent item, so there's no reason to count this item in inventory. So now let's sell three six packs that'll make the parent item down to 9.5 let's hit save at the bottom of the screen exit out exit out of our option or manager screen we're going to leave these items off the screen here so hit delete and now let's ring up our six pack select our beer department there's our Heineken six pack and now let's, let's ring this up scan the license Okay, it's a sale in three seconds. Let's ring up two more. And now let's hit pay to finalize our transaction. Again, this should bring our main parent item, the 36 pack, down to 9.5. Would you like to print this receipt? I'm gonna hit no for now. So now let's hit done. Options or manager screen. Number five, administrative. Letter A, inventory maintenance. Now let's go to our lookup, which is our most fast and efficient way of looking up our items in the inventory. And let's click on department, select our beer department. There's our six pack, and there's our 36 pack. And there you go, our number in stock has now been adjusted to 9.5. And that is how you link your inventory items together. So as you can see, I sold the six pack, and I was able to make that deduction from the main pattern, the 36 pack. And that is how the recipe feature works. The next tab I'm going to move on to is going to be price levels. Now we offer 26 different price levels that you can associate with your customers. So let's say that you offer maybe a military discount or a senior citizen discount. Let's go to price level M. Here let's set this to 50%. And then hit enable on the right here. So as you can see the price has now decreased. So anybody that's associated with this price level will now get this item at this price. To associate the price level with a customer is very easy. Let's hit save at the bottom of the screen, exit out, click on number 5 administrative, letter E, customer maintenance. Bottom section here, price level. So if I mark this price level M, moving forward, this customer will get their items at that discounted amount. Let's exit out of here and go back to inventory maintenance, number 5 administrative. Letter A, Inventory Maintenance. Next tab I'm going to move on to is your notes. This allows you to put any kind of note for the item. Let's say it needs to be handled any specific way, or maybe there's a special, uh, it was imported from a special country. You can have that note included for the item. So now that we've broken down the Inventory Maintenance screen, the next thing I want to show you is Customer Maintenance. So let's exit out of here by hitting Exit on your lower right. Administrative number five, and letter E, customer maintenance. Now this will be the screen where you add all of your customers into the software. At the top of the screen we have customer number, first name, last name, and email address. The only required fields when adding a customer to the software is customer number, first name, and last name. We highly recommend that you store the email address as well because we have the ability to do mass email. 
Now at the bottom here, you also notice a couple additional fields. We highly recommend that you store this information as well because this gives the ability to sort through your customers a little bit more easier. On the top here, we have a couple tabs. Under extended info, we have the ability to store credit card information as well as driver's license information. Accounting info allows you to create two types of customers in the store form, either a standard customer or a layaway customer. A standard customer is anyone who you're billing a monthly statement. A layaway customer allows them to pay off their balance in either weekly or monthly installments. If you are shipping and billing to a customer, then you have the ability to store this information as well. History will show you any items the customer has ever purchased from your establishment. Notes. In here, you can put any kind of specific note if the customer needs to be handled with special care. Properties. This allows you to associate your uh, location with multiple stores. So this way, if you have any customers added to the software, they are now global in all locations. Stores will show you all the different store locations that you currently have in the software. Now, let's go back to general info. Now, in the middle of the screen here, we have a loyalty plan. The system has the ability to do loyalty plans. Loyalty plans is a great way to have repeat customers. Basically, you would set up incentive for that customer to come back. Now, let's exit out of here and show you how loyalty plans work. Before we exit out of here, I just want to bring one more thing to your attention, is that when using the loyalty plans or gift cards, with a single location, a processor is not required. But when you have more than one location, a processor is required because we want your points and gift cards to be global on all locations. So that is why a processor is required. But for a single location, no processor is required and the system can handle that internally. So now let's exit out of here. Let's click on setup number four. Letter C, customer loyalty. Now when you click on customer loyalty, you have loyalty incentives and loyalty plans. First, let's create the loyalty incentive. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add so I can show you the different incentives that we offer. So add. And when you hit this drop down arrow, this will show you all the different incentive types. So for points reward, this allows you to redeem points for a discounted or free item. Birthday bonus allows you to give customers a free or discounted item for their birthday. Frequency discount, this allows you to give customers a, give customers a discount who shop often at your establishment. And then fire coupon allows you to create a coupon in the software and then associate that coupon with the incentive. In most cases, points rewards are most commonly used. So in here, we're going to call this free voucher. Now, after how many points are rewarded, we're going to say 10 points. Because let's say, you know, after the customer comes in, they come in on a Friday, and they get one bottle, okay? Now, once they reach a certain amount of points, they'll then get the reward. We could also change this to 100 points, whatever points you want this to be worth. Now, for the reward type, we're going to set this to free voucher. Now, the voucher value will be $5. So let's say on their next visit, they'll get $5 or $10 off their next visit. So we'll make this $10. Now, let's hit save. All right, so just to backtrack our steps, we set our voucher value for $10. We then set our reward type for free voucher. And the amount of points that are required is going to be 10 points. And we set the description as free voucher. Now let's hit update one more time. Now we can exit out. We're going to click on setup number four one more time. Customer loyalty, letter C. And this time select loyalty plans. Now let's hit add at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to duplicate the description for the loyalty incentives. So we're going to call this free voucher. Now in the middle section here, I'm going to hit add incentive. And I'm now going to select the new incentive that I just created. I'm now going to mark this with prompt. So this way, every anytime I'm eligible for my reward, it will prompt me, letting me know that I'm eligible for my reward. Now I'll hit save at the bottom of the screen. Because also, anybody who's associated with this loyalty plan, I want them to accumulate points. Now you have the ability to add multiple incentives to a plan. So this is why you see exclusive and override. So now let's hit update. And now let's go create a customer and associate this loyalty plan all together. So we're going to exit out. Number five, administrative. Letter E, customer maintenance. Now I'm going to hit add at the bottom of the screen. For the number, the customer number, I'm gonna assign the phone number, 845-920-0800. First name, let's call it Adam. Last name, call it Mora. And for my email address, I'm gonna type that in here.
All right, and now I'm going to hit save, just to save this top information. Save, and now I'm going to hit loyalty plan in the middle section here, and select free voucher. And now I'm going to hit update one more time to commit my changes. So as you can see, my bonus points achieved here is still set to zero. So now let's go ring up some sales and show you how that's going to work. Exit. And before we bring some sale, there are two ways to accumulate points. One way is to earn bonus points by the dollar amount or to set items worth a certain amount of points. So number four is setup. Letter G setup screen. Invoice settings. Earn bonus points for dollars. This means if you spend $20, you're going to get 20 points. $50, 50 points. $100, 100 points. The other way to accumulate points, let's hit update, exit out, navigate to number five, administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. And then in the middle section here, we have bonus points. Here, you can set the item worth however many points you want it to be worth. So now let's exit out of here, ring some sales, and show you how we're going to accumulate these points. So let's hit find, select our new customer, Adam Mora, or set this back to cash customer, and we can hit quick find, type in the number, 845-920-0800, enter, and there you go, that also pulls out my information. Now let's bring some items so we can accumulate some points. TS lookup, let's get a couple bottles of wine here, let's make me scan my license, of course, there we go. Hit OK to that. Let's get a couple bottles here. All right. And now let's hit pay. All right. That finalizes the transaction. Would you like to print a receipt? I'm going to say no for now. Close it out for exact amount. So now let's go pull up the customer's information. Hit done. Let's hit find. There's Adam Mora. Double click. And there you go. So we've earned 32 points. So we're actually well over the amount of points that we need to accumulate. The only points that we need to accumulate were 10 points. So when I rank an item and I have this customer selected, it should now prompt me, letting me know that I'm eligible for my reward. Let's hit TS Lookup again, also known as our touchscreen lookup, and bring up anything here. Scan my license. All right, hit OK to that. And now let's hit Done. And as soon as I hit Pay, it's going to flag me, letting me know that I'm eligible for my reward. So hit Pay. And there you go. Bonus available. Type points reward. Bonus, free voucher, would you like to apply this? Let's hit yes. So as you can see what it did here, it applied the voucher to the invoice for free, but what this is going to do is print out a separate receipt after your original receipt with a barcode so you can scan that voucher on your next visit. And that is how customer loyalty works. Next thing I want to show you is going to be employee maintenance. So let's click on options, number five, administrative, Letter F, employee maintenance. Now this would be the screen where you add all of your employees in the system so you can track their hours and wages along with all the functionalities they can do in the software. The top section is the general information that's required for an employee. The middle section here is all the permissions that you can set for the employee. Bottom section is how we navigate and add our employees into the software. Now in the middle section here where we see permissions, you have the ability to log as exception, which is a pretty neat feature because this allows you to track every fun functionality that each employee has. Now even if a manager has the ability to open cash drawer, you now have the ability to do logs exception. Now keep in mind to use log exception does require an enterprise license, but this feature allows you to track all these functionalities in two reports called operational exceptions report and your invoice exceptions report. Now to track a functionality, all you need to do is highlight it and then put a check mark in the box. You'll know if you're tracking that functionality by highlighting it and a check mark appears. So if I highlight open cash drawer right now, you'll notice the check mark disappears. If I would highlight tax exempt invoice, check mark reappears. So now I can track open cash drawer if I'd like. Move on, shows that I'm not tracking that, but open cash drawer I'm now tracking along with tax exempt invoice. Now also, in Employee Maintenance, you have the ability to store personal information. Job codes and wages, this allows you to program their entitlement of what they do in your establishment. A good example would be, let's say you have a cashier, or maybe you have somebody that's stocking shelves. You can create job codes so when they clock into the software, they can select the position of where they're working. Store Association, again, we have the ability to work with the web portal, so you can handle a multi-site location. 
Payroll Info, we have the ability to export our payroll information to payroll cities. At the bottom of the screen here, we have job code setup. And in here, we're going to create two job codes to show you how they work. So the first job code we're going to create is going to be a cashier. So cashier. And we're going to set a default wage here. Let's make that uh, 8 bucks. And overtime wage is going to be $10. Now for cashier, we want to make sure they have access to point of sale. This way they can finalize sales and complete transactions for our customers. Now you also want to set ship report to 1 and include department totals and itemize credit card transactions. What this is going to do is print automatically when the employee clocks out of the software. And it will also include all department totals along with itemizing all credit card transactions. Let's hit update or save. Now. Let's add one more job code in here. And we're going to call this one called stock. So stock. And for the default wage, let's say we're going to give them uh, $7. And the overtime wage is going to be $9. Now for anybody that's doing stock, we're going to leave access to point of sale unchecked because there is no need for them to log into the software and ring sales. The only thing they can do is use the software to track their hours and wages, and that is it so they can go no further than the login screen. Let's hit save. Now let's exit out of here. And now let's look at an employee. By hitting this drop down arrow, this will give you the ability to look through all of your employees at once. This is the employee that I have currently added, which is Adam. And under job codes and wages, I'm now going to apply the job codes that I just created. So add, cashier, Overly wage is eight dollars, and overtime wage is ten dollars. We're going to add our next job code, which is stock. Hourly wage is seven dollars, and overtime wage is nine dollars. Now we're going to hit save changes. Now let's exit out of here and clock in with this employee. So we're going to exit out, exit out of our options or manager screen, exit out of our invoice screen. And on the blue and white time clock here, we're now going to log into the software. So the ID is 02, enter, 02, enter. Let's hit OK now. And now at this point, we can clock in. So clock in, and now it asks me to select the position of where I'm working. So let's say I'm working stock. Let's hit done. So now if I try to log into the software, the software should not let me go any further than the login screen because I'm working stock. And I'm not ringing sales, so I, ha I should have no reason to go into the cash drawer. So 02, enter, 02, enter, and there you go. You are currently working job code stock and may not log in. Let's hit OK to that. So that worked exactly the way I want it to work. So that's just a basic extra step of security for my staff. So now, let's hit this blue and white time clock again, and now we'll clock out with this employee, and then clock back in as a cashier. So 02, enter, 02, enter. Now we're going to clock out, hit done, and now let's clock in as a cashier. Same idea again. Like I said, we have multiple job codes applied, so this person can work more than one job job in, in the system. So again, 02, 02, enter, clock in. Now we're going to select cashier. Now hit done. Now let's log into the, into the software again with the same ID, 02, 02. And now I can go to the software and finalize sales if I need to. Now that is the difference of having access to POS unchecked or checked. Now let's go back into our options screen. We're now going to click on number 5 administrative and back into employee maintenance. Now employee maintenance, we have the ability to look at all of the clockers that we did for the day. So if you click on time clock management here, this will show you all the different clockers that we clocked in as. So it shows that we clocked in as a stock, and we also clocked in as a cashier. Now this is one location of how to get the time clock management. The other location, let's exit out of here, it's under administrative, letter J, time clock management. Same exact screen. Let's go back into employee maintenance. Time clock management. Now in here you also have the ability to adjust the start and end date as long as the employee has been clocked out of the system. If they have only been clocked into the software, then you do not have that ability. So let's say I want to generate some more time here. I can go back and change this to AM. Now when I click out of the field, you're going to notice that my minutes are going to go up and my wages is also going to accumulate.
There you go. So now I've earned set, I've earned eighty four dollars and twelve cents as my wages, and my number of minutes have gone up to seven hundred twenty one minutes. Now if I try to adjust this for my other employee here, all right, change this to a.m. and click out of the field, this is going to go back go back to what it was p.m. because they're not clocked out of the system. So if I click out of the field, there you go, back to p.m. Now only a manager can make this setting. Now there's just one last feature that I want to show you in time clock management, and that is the payroll export. This allows you to configure your payroll export settings as long as this information has been supplied to you from Payroll City. Again, you would click on the payroll export setting and then enter that information in this field. Exit out of here. Exit out. Let's exit out of here. Now the next thing I want to show you is going to be reporting. So let's exit out of our employee maintenance. Number five, administrative. Letter L, reporting. Now in this screen we have over 80 reports. We're not going to cover all 80 reports, but reports that are specific to your everyday needs. On the left side we have our categories. We have sales, inventory, customer, employee, restaurant, and rentals. When you select these uh, different tabs on the left, different reports will populate. If you are unsure what a report details, then you can highlight the report, then it gives you a brief description of what that report details. Notice how this changes every time you select a report. You also see here in the middle that we have certain criteria that opens up when you have a report selected. So for invoice tolls report, you'll notice that select cashier and select station is open. But if you select another report here, these fields are now grayed out. This gives you the ability to narrow down your search. On the right side here we have a start date and start time. If you double click in the field this pulls up an on-screen calendar. If you click on the time this pulls up a little on-screen time frame. On the top right here we have advanced reporting. Advanced reporting requires an enterprise license but this also allows you to create reports in the system if you feel that none of these reports fit your needs. You would need to have a background with Crystal Reporting and SQL. Now let's go over a couple of these reports that you, would, that you would need for your everyday needs. Now invoice total reports, when you hit display, gives you three options. Number one for completed invoices, number two for unhold invoices, and number three for voided invoices. As I mentioned at the beginning of the training, all voids are tracked and recorded in your invoice total report option number three. The next report we're going to move on to is your detailed daily report. The detailed daily report closely resembles your end of day report. Now if you feel that you ever have any discrepancies on your end of day or your detailed daily report, run both reports and compare them together. Usually you'll find that discrepancy. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit display on the lower right. And when I hit display you'll notice I have a couple options that I can enable on this report. I also have the ability to adjust the start date and end date. And also break this report down by cashier or by station. Where on the end of day report, you do not have any of these abilities. If that report hasn't ran for three days, then the end of day is going to run that report for all three of those days. Next report we're going to move on to is your detailed department sales, also known as your product mix report. And this report here is where you can use this for your categories, for more detailed reporting. So let's hit display. And when you hit display, you have two types of report that will come up, all sales or returned items. Click on all sales. Just one second while this generates. There we are. Now in this report you have your department ID and item number. So like I said, it will list the department and the item that's being sold out of that department along with the description of that item, the part number, the location, the quantity, and the total. Now if you ever need to export any of these reports, then you have that ability as well by clicking export report on your top left. When you hit export report, you have multiple extensions that you can export to. Crystal reports, PDF, CSV, Microsoft Excel, RTF, and XML. Let's scroll down a little bit further. General hourly report. This report can be used a couple ways. You can use this report to see how many items have been sold out of a specific department and the amount that was sold out of the department and the number of items that were sold out of that department. This will also give you a breakdown of the day of the hours throughout the day and the amount of money you've made between those hours. 
This will allow you to schedule staff accordingly. So you know how many sales you made, let's say between the hours of eight and one, you, went, you ran maybe $500 worth of sales. Between the hours of one and five, you run over $3,000 in sales. So you know at that time, they need to have more scheduled staff. And of course, you have the ability to export the support if need be. Scroll down a little bit more. All right. And the next report we're going to talk about is going to be your invoice exceptions report. Okay. And that is this report here. And also your operational exceptions report. This allows you to track all the functionalities that you give to your employees. So anything that's considered an invoice exceptions would be a void, a line item discount, anything like that. Operational exceptions would be such as opening the cash drawer, reviewing reporting, changing inventory prices, things like that. Next report I want to show you is going to be our flash report. For what it is, it's a good quick figure report. So let's hit display. And when you hit display, this will give you net sales, net sales tax, net sales not tax, exempt sales, liability items that have been sold out of the system, taxes, gross sales, and all tender options that you accept. And at the bottom here, as you can see, of course, you can export the report if need be. And of course, we have reports that will confirm that your credit cards have gone through and been settled and have been reached over to your processor. That's our credit card detail report and our credit card batch detail report. Next tab we're going to move on to is your inventory tab. Now in here, we have uh, list alphabetical and list numerical. Same report, just listed differently. When you hit display, this will give you all of your items you currently have in your inventory. And the last page will give you a current inventory value. These two are the same report. Now the reorder report, as I mentioned in the, in the, in the beginning of the training, when ordering your products, how this field can be very, very beneficial. Again, this allows you to reorder these items and be dumped into this report automatically. Just makes counting your inventory a little bit easier. If we scroll down a little bit further, we have a couple of reports such as current value, current value of your entire inventory. All right, we have our top sellers items, any items that are, that are, that are top sellers, top 10 sellers, item activity reports, specific item activity reports if you are curious to know how a specific item is doing in your inventory. And of course, we have reports based on the purchase orders that we ran earlier. All right, and again, if you're uncertain what report details, then just highlight that report and it'll give you a brief description. Then of course, we have reports based on your customers, account receivable summaries, account receivable statements, phone and email listing, if you need to do any kind of mass email, sales history, anything they've ever purchased out of the system, shipping and billing information, if you need to print that as well, and then employee. For employees, of course, we have their hours and wages report, uh, commissions, if you're accepting commissions for any reason, hours and wages summary, employee listing of, your, of all your employees, any kind of cash pickups that you're doing in the software, things like that. Now let's exit out of here. Now there's one more report that I do want to go over with you and that's going to be your end of day, but I'm going to cover that more towards the end of the training. The next thing I want to move on to is touch screen configuration. So let's click on number four, setup, letter J, touch screen configuration. Now we're going to click on items and departments. Now this shows you all the departments you currently have added into the software. And to rearrange these buttons in any order that you like, all you need to do is drag and drop. So let's say you want to bring wine all the way to the bottom. Literally, grab it from the top and drag it to the bottom. You also have the ability to set pictures for your buttons as well, just by hitting select here. And this will make you select the picture that you have stored on the computer. Color coding. To color code your products is very easy. Highlight the button, hit select color, and select your, quarter, your color accordingly. If you do not like any of these colors here, then you can hit define custom colors and create your own color to your liking. And now I've changed alcohol to green. Now to hide any of these departments in here, all you need to do is highlight it and uncheck this box at the bottom of the screen, display department on touch screen. This will hide the department along with everything that's in that department. So again, this is your touch screen configuration which allows you to configure your invoice screen. Let's exit out of here. Now, the last report that I want to talk about is your end of day report. To run your end of day report, you also have the ability to have your credit cards automatically settled when you run that report. But first, we need to make that setting. 
So let's click on number four setup, letter G, setup screen. Now let's click on payment processing. Now click on other options. Perform batch settlement on end of day. This means when we run our end of day, it will automatically settle our credit cards for us. So this is one less step that we have to do at the end of the night. Now let's exit out of here by hitting update. So our changes can commit. And now let's navigate to number three, tools, letter O, end of day. Now let's say you ever had to do a manual settlement for any reason. You can quickly navigate to administrative number five, letter K, credit card settlement, and then hit settle. This is how you do a manual settlement. Now there's two locations where you can run an end of day, either under number three, tools, letter O, end of day, or on the login screen, under file, end of day. Now like I said, the end of day and detailed daily report closely resemble each other. This is why these two reports are close together. Again, if you feel that you have any discrepancies on these reports, run them and compare them together. Now when I hit end of day, it's going to require me to enter my admin password. And by default, that is admin on the top and zero one at the bottom. At this point, it's automatically trying to sell my credit cards. I currently have a test uh, credit card set up, so this is why it's not settling. But just to show you that it's automatically settling my credit cards for me. Hit OK to that. And yes, I would like to continue with the end of day. Our expected deposit is $87.28. Is this correct? Yes, it is. This is not correct. Yes. At this point, it's now finalizing my report, so it's going to print out. It's going to hit cancel on that. And now my end of day has been completed. Now, the reason why I do my end of day first before making my backup is because of the prompt that we get to make before we make our backup. backup. So under File, Database Maintenance, Backup Database. Again, this is going to require administrative password. Admin on the top, zero one at the bottom. It is strongly recommended to make a credit card settlement before backing up the database. Have you settled your credit card transactions? Well, yes, we did. I walked you through on how to enable that option to automatically settle our credit cards. So yes, we did do our credit card settlement. But let's say that you didn't do a credit card settlement. The only reason why you have this prompt is so the, so the backup has the most recent financial information in that backup. It's very important to make these backups because if your system goes down for any reason, all we need to do is reinstall the software, restore your backup, and you're back where you left off. But without a backup, you would have to start from scratch. So it's very, very, very important that you back up these databases. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit yes, because I did do my credit card settlement. But again, if you didn't run a credit card settlement, you can still hit yes to make your backup, just so you can make a backup throughout the day. You know, you don't have to complete a credit card settlement, but it wants you to, so you have the most recent financial information in that backup. So let's hit yes. And at this point, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now, we highly recommend that you save it to either a flash drive, external hard drive, or even off-site, such as Carbonite. Now, the reason why I'm sending, saving it to my desktop is because later on, when I connect my flash drive, all I need to do is just drag and drop. So I'm going to call the backup today's date, 3-21-2014. I'm also going to give it a timestamp so I know exactly when I made this backup. So 3-45 p.m. Now I'll select my desktop, and then I'll hit save. Now we also have the ability to automate the process for backups. If you're interested in finding information on that, then you can navigate to the faq.pcamerica.com website. Type in automatic backup on your top right and they'll provide you with all the documentation that you need to set that up. This now concludes our training on the liquor store. I hope you enjoyed the training. Have a great day.